Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to put together a succulent arrangement in this really cute little urn. I picked this up down at the garden center yesterday or the day before, I don't know. Whenever I went down there to get plants, I saw this and I had to go back and get it because I think it's just so sweet and it's really lightweight and it does have a drain hole in there which is really nice. And I mean for this succulent arrangement to be an outside arrangement just until the temperatures are cold, too cold for it to be out here anymore. In fact, I kind of want to keep it on this pillar. I mean, we use this pillar a lot for flower arranging and other projects and such. So it'll be nice to have something lightweight that I can remove when I need to use the pillar, but something pretty to at least sit on it in the meantime while we're not using it. So anyway, I've got a really beautiful assortment of succulents that I've just been kind of gathering up for a while. I mean, you know, we have a plant room upstairs where I've got some grow lights where I can keep a few things like this. So I hauled a bunch of it out here. I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out or what the outcome. I just want it to be a beautiful mixed succulent arrangement. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my cactus soil. You want to make sure you use a soil that's formulated specifically for cactus or succulents because it uh, drains really well. It doesn't hold a lot of moisture around the roots which is really important. And I always like to start with quite a bit in here because I typically remove a lot of the soil from around the succulents root balls because it allows me to pack the plants in a lot closer together a lot more easily. So we'll start with about this much and we'll add if we need to along the way. And I will probably slightly end up mounding this arrangement, which we have done a video specifically on how I make a mounted succulent arrangement, which we can link down below if you want to watch another succulent video. Um, but this is going to be fun because there's just so many beautiful colors. So I'm just going to, I'll show you what I do with the first succulent here. Let's start with, this is an Echeveria peacock eye. It's beautiful blue with kind of a neon, almost pink around the edges of the leaves there. So I'm going to take off a lot of this soil. And I knew, know it looks kind of like drastic, kind of flipping soil all over the place too. But succulents, like honestly, I could take every single root off or just even cut the stem and pop it in here if I wanted to do it that way. But it's nice to have a little bit of an anchor. So what I do, you can see right there what I'm left with. I'm just going to pack some soil up against the side of the container right in the front here so that I have a barrier in between the root and the, I, is this some kind of metal? must be some kind of metal. It feels like that. It's thin. Yeah, it's really thin, but it's, it's like definitely metal. Anyway, um, so I kind of want to tip this. Can you see that if I, if I kind of show you from the side there? I'm going to tip it and tuck soil in around the roots like that. And that way you can easily see this. If I were to plant it straight up and down, you would just get a different look of arrangement, which is totally personal. Um, preference at this point. But I like there to be kind of like a ring of beautiful succulents around the edge and then have it kind of mound up. And I like to see the face of all the succulents. So I think what I'm going to do is just continue on. And this is probably going to be a fairly slow process because I just want to take my time and really get the color and texture right. So I think the next thing I'm going to use is this right here. This is a portulacaria, which um, it's a trailing one. It's really beautiful. Now I don't need this entire thing. So what we're gonna do is pop this out of its container and we are going to separate it. So I just have a few little pieces I can use over the side. Ideally, I should have a work table right here. <laughs> can I get you one? Uh, let me see how I can do this. I'll just make a big mess. Cheddar, stay away from my coffee bud. Reminded me. Don't want it to get cold. I'm just going to separate this up a little bit and then whatever I have left over in the end, I always just repot, probably right back in this container. It's almost kind of satisfying to do this a little bit. I don't know why. It just feels good. That's a, that's a beauty of a piece. Let's try this one. I'm just going to start putting this stuff on the ground. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this looks too big. Are the cats fighting somewhere? Yeah. What are you guys doing? You guys need to behave yourselves. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. That is so, so pretty. Okay, I'm packing soil in around the roots. Okay, so I think I need something maybe a little bit more red 
to bring out the red and the stem color here. Boy, I like the fact that you can still, like it's airy enough that you can still see the beauty of the container. This is nice. I think this is a type of crassula. I'm not sure, crassula, crassula. Um, I'm not sure what variety, but it's got some beautiful coloring here. Nope, I need to have the blue next to it. See, this is all about just like trial and error, whoops, and figuring out what goes well together, what contrasts to look really beautiful and set each other apart. That is gorgeous right there. And then we can come in with our red. There was just too much red together, I think, or too much green. Okay, and now I'm going to build, hmm, let's see, what am I gonna build? Maybe a little height here. That's gorgeous, but it's too green, I think. I think I need something bolder. Mm, maybe not, let's try it. This is a Crassilla watch chain. These are one of the easiest things to propagate and one of the easiest things to keep alive forever. I have still, I did a terrarium right after, that was right after Benjamin was born, wasn't it? That terrarium with the hydrostones, with the three little plants and the mushroom. Was before? It wasn't before. I, I seem to remember like having it be one of the first projects. My mom came to watch Benjamin while we popped out to the greenhouse for a little bit. Anyway, it's still living and it has one of these in here and it's just like thriving and doing beautifully. That looks pretty, I think. Look at that. I feel like I need to uh, rotate this container a bit though so you can actually see what I'm doing. Isn't that nice? Maybe sink it down a little bit more. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that so much. Okay, then a Portulacaria variegata. A rainbow elephant bush, I think is what this one's called. This is when I need more soil. Echeveria dondo. Oh, this one is rooted. Boy. We never see succulents rooted like that. That's crazy, look at that. Okay, well, here we go. We're gonna still tear off a lot of these roots. Was that from Andrew? Yeah, beast root system. Who grows those? I'm not sure, but they, I think they recently got a new supplier and the quality and the size, like this right here was $3.99. Not bad. Oh, that looks good. So for see, like right now, I feel like there's a little bit of a hole right here because we've got a low level and then a high level and I need some kind of a filler. So we're gonna fix this. Nope. Mm, I'm indecisive today. I think this will work. This is a sedum firestorm. I think that might, well, no, that won't work. It needs to be more blue. What in the world? I'm having issues. Maybe one of these darker ones. Yeah, that might be nice. This is an Echeveria called licorice. See how this looks in there. Tuck it in. That looks good. Make sure to mound some soil up over its root ball here. I think that at this point, since I've got kind of the whole front done, we'll flip it around. You can see what it looks like because you can definitely see the mound I've got. And then I'll start building from the other side anyway. I wish I could build it from the front. <laughs> Difficult. So you can see here that it's got a little bit of a mound, like it's a little bit higher than the side of the pot, which I do tend to like to do because I like them to look layered like this. But you can see that there aren't really visible roots. I make sure to cover all of the root balls really well, and that's how come the soil gets mounded. And what they end up doing is they end up rooting into that soil and kind of compacting it or creating almost like erosion control, if that makes sense. 
um, to where when you water it, there isn't soil coming out everywhere. But in the meantime, until they do that, because it does take them a couple months to start really kind of rooting in and forming new roots, uh, I just water very lightly and, and gently. Uh, and that way I tend to get away with it pretty well. So now I'm gonna just start building the other direction. I think I need something bold right here, like big and bold. This might be too big and bold, but maybe not. Let's try it. This is an Echeveria Pollux. Oh, that's a beaut. Yes, I need a little more soil. Using the soil that you just removed from the root ball is totally fine if you want to. I don't tend to like to do that just because I don't know how long those plants have been in that soil. Um, and only if it's bug free, by the way. And uh, you only wanna be using bug free plants anyway. Um, but I feel like using some new soil that's got a little bit of nutrient quality to it is better when you're starting out. I'm gonna tuck this Aeonia Mardi Gras in. So a few of these you aren't gonna really be able to see. I'm kind of doing it more for the benefit of the front of the display here. I just didn't know it needed it until I saw it from the front. Now it looks more full from the front, if that's possible. A little bit of bold height here. And I'm gonna clip these lower leaves because I kind of damaged them anyway. Sneak my Falcos in here quick and it'll make it easier for me to tuck stuff up next to them. I'm going to draw a little bit of this uh, more white variegated interest over onto this side. So I've got some sedum here that I really want to tuck in right here, but they're too tall. So I'm just going to use them as cuttings and cut the root ball completely off. And you can let these sit out and heal for a few days and let the cut end callus, but you don't have to. The only thing that you need to do is to make sure that you just don't water your arrangement for a little while after you plant it. So just give it like a week. These plants were all well watered when I, before I put them in here, so they'll be totally fine to wait for these to have a chance to heal just inside the soil. Um, and then they'll start to form roots eventually, usually in a couple months. And this is why I love succulents because they're so Versatile this way. I think I kind of like went about the design of this wrong. I should have done like m tall to skinny or tall to, you know, how I usually e either start on the bottom ring and then work my way up. Mm -hmm. I'm just like willy nilly. It's kind of weird. All over. Yeah. Looks good though. Good. Thank you. All right. I just feel like I need to work out something right here, which might mean this Echeveria needs to come up slightly. Okay, in goes a panda plant. Got to have that fuzzy texture in there somewhere. So I'm just going to stand back real quick and kind of just take a second and decide what I need to put in here to finish it off. Hmm. I think I'm done. I think it looks good. So I ended up putting in some more of the sedum right here. Is it called Firestorm? I think it's called Firestorm. But those and then the little um, sedums down here, I used by cuttings. And I think those are the only ones I did by cuttings. Everything else has roots. Um, so I will wait a few days before I actually water this. But let me kind of just twist it around for you so you can see like from all angles, because this will be seen from all angles. So it has to look good from all angles. I love to put together one-sided things though. <laughs> it's like, it's so nice to put together something you don't have to really worry about from the back or have to like use up a bunch of really beautiful looking succulents. But I think the colors and the textures ended up being just like on point. Need to clean it. Need a little fan, like a little oh, yeah. like blower thing. Like aerosol can sound? No, uh, like a little, uh, almost like a baby nose oh, right. thing. I didn't make quite a mess. It's a little bit difficult, especially when you're dealing with Echeverias, like these right here. 
um, this big, big beast right around the corner here. They have a powdery coating on their leaves and when you touch it, it ruins the aesthetic of the plant. Yeah, so Aaron said you could see on this one where it had been touched. I don't think I touched it. They had a little bit of uh, marring on them already from other, like, I don't know, maybe I touched it. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at not handling them too much. I try to handle them from their stem or their roots um, because it just makes them look so much more clean and um, like perfection when there's not a bunch of fingerprints on them. Um, and that's something that I didn't know. I remember when we went down uh, to California, we did a, a succulent arrangement with Cindy from the Succulent Perch. That was like the first year we were making videos. And I remember going through a succulent like nursery and I was touching everything and she was like, you really shouldn't be touching those because, and then she explained it to me and I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So it, I mean, I didn't even know that going down there. I mean, you know, there's a lot to learn about stuff like this. So anyway, um, as in terms of care, this is going to be the perfect location. It's only going to be moving like two feet, three feet to my left. It gets really nice morning sun and then it's protected from the harsh afternoon sun, which is what this arrangement will like. I mean, you usually think that succulents want full sun, most of them, some of them can do it, but we're super harsh here. I mean, when it gets over 100 degrees, the soft succulents like these echeverias will tend to, to burn on their leaves, and I don't want that to happen. So they'll get morning sun protection in the afternoon. Um, I'll wait a week to water, and then after that, they'll just get about once a week watering uh, when they're outside. If it's a little bit extra windy, I'll probably give them a little bit more. And then once it cools off, usually 40 degrees is my threshold, and I start moving everything in when it starts getting down to 40. Um, because I know I have like a, a little smidge of time, a little window to get everything inside. So I'll move it inside somewhere that it's got a lot of light. Um, and then typically with an arrangement like this, you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, you put way too many succulents in that arrangement. They actually can handle this like for a year. They can stay like this because you're packing them in so close. It restricts the amount of room they have to grow and they just won't grow. Like plants can sense that. Um, and it'll take them a while even just to sit here and settle into their new home. So we've got a couple, three months before they'll even start to think about putting on more roots or even trying to grow at all. Um, so that's just something that I've learned throughout the years as well. Like I can get away with doing this because usually every, once a year I want to take things apart and do something new anyway. Um, so if it wasn't something, like if it's something you want to keep for a really long time, you could do it like this and then you could just eventually pop a succulent out here or there as your other ones need room, or you could just give them a little bit more space. But I like to not see soil. I like to see all of these just colors and textures together. I think it's really fun. So anyway, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.